Hi everyone, this is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles. Today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna try something new and I hope it works out. Um, I'm, I have an extensive costume jewelry collection, but I also have an extensive costume jewelry book collection. These are books that are all types of different types of books in regards to costume jewelry. And there's one book in particular that I'm going to be um, uh, exploring today and it's a book on brooches. Um, but before I get started on that book, I just wanted to share with you some of the jewelry that I'm currently wearing. These are all recent acquisitions. I got these acquisitions within the last month. These earrings with the turquoise stones on them are from a company called Bohem. And I did a, try to do a little research on them. And unfortunately, I couldn't find anything on them. And I bought these, I think, for $10, uh, a little bit more than I would normally pay for, for jewelry. This necklace, and I've been getting a lot of compliments on it. If you look at it up close like this, um, it's um, a bumblebee. And as you notice, there's a lot of bumblebees in my collection. Uh, this is from Susan Shaw, and this one is also marked Made in the USA. Uh, USA. Um, here is a brooch, and you might think it's an Alexis Bitar, but it's not. It's actually a knockoff. But I just loved the way it looked so much that I didn't care if it was a knockoff. I still wanted to wear it. Um, and then finally, this is the, uh, the oldest piece in my collection that I'm wearing today. And that is a Blue Topaz uh, Vintage Retro Cocktail Ring. I'm going to do um, a video on my cocktail rings next, I think. Um, so without further ado, let's get started on um, the book that I'll be um, exploring. There's two books. One book called Brooches. And I have to put my glasses on for this one. It's called Timeless Adornment um, by Laurie Edinger Gross. And um, this other book, which is what I'm probably going to be doing the most work out of, is called Read My Pins, Stories from a Diplomat's Jewel Box by Madeline Albright. Fascinating book. Um, and what I'm going to be doing with this book is showing some inspirational pieces that are in this book that I have in my collection. So to get started, let's pull out this bro brooch uh, book on brooches. Um, and what I loved about this book was that it explained the history of brooches. And one of the things that it said was um, a brooch is a powerful object. Um, and look at the way that that person scattered all those brooches on um, that jean jacket. And that's the way I love to wear brooches, just like that. But brooches were really um, utilitarian. They actually um, were worn by the cavemen and the nomadic uh, um, cavemen to um, hold up their garments that were made usually of um they were made of animal skins and so this would be like an early romanesque fibula brooch um and from this book i wanted to show you another way that you can wear your brooches just scattered so the, the previous one is on a jean jacket and this is on a lovely lovely um fancy jacket um and I, that's the my favorite way of wearing brooches but from this book, I wanted to show you this piece here. And this piece does not look like a brooch, but it is. And I happen to have that piece right here in my collection. Unfortunately, it broke at the stomach. So this is actually originally a bracelet, but you could, if you choose to, wear it as, look at the tiny brooch here. Um, so that it dangles like that. And you'll see this on the Madeline Albright. Um, oops, maybe like that. You'll see the same piece shown on the Madeline Albright. And, and I got to get that repaired because it is a really nice piece. And then I wanted to show you this piece here. And this is very similar to this piece here. This is the back of it. And this is the front of it. Um, so a lot of these book pieces, you might not find the exact replica of it, but you can find inspiring pieces. Um, and this book is called Brooches, Timeless Adornment. But what I'm going to be focusing on is really 
this book, Madeline Albright. And she was the Secretary of State to the Clintons. And she was, she was a diplomat. Um, and what was interesting about her brooches is that it's, it, the brooches she wore gave you her mood and what she was going through. And she was telling a story through her brooches. So we're going to explore some of the stories that she told. Um, as you can see, she's got a huge collection of butterfly pieces. And I pulled these two out of three. I have three of them actually to show you. I have, uh, an extensive butterfly jewelry um, brooch collection. And this is just three samples. And butterfly brooches are very collectible. A lot of people tend to collect them for good reason. They're gorgeous. Um, as we move a little along this book, uh, one of the things that she described here was that pins need not cost a king's or queen's ransom to be fun. And I agree with that philosophy. I have brooches that are cheap and brooches that are not so cheap. And it doesn't matter. If you like them and they mean something to you and they, they call you, then that's all that you really need to um, purchase them. So this here is um, the sheet of the wheat. It is a symbol of uh, abundance and health. This pin was given to me upon my return to Georgetown University after my time as Secretary of State, a sheath of wheat. So for her, this pin, um, the symbol of it is of um, abundance and health. And so when I wear this brooch, that's what I'm gonna be thinking of. And what I liked about this book was that it tells you a story about her and her diplomacy and things that matter to her. Um, here's a patriotic brooches that she has here. And I showed you in my previous pin collection some of my patriotic brooches. Um, I pulled this one because it kind of reminded me of this, this little one that was over here. And we're going to be voting soon. And um, when I go out to vote, I probably wear a brooch, this brooch here or maybe a scattering of brooches very similar to this one. Um, I have another brooch um, that I'll be showing you a little bit later, it's down here. So um, I like that this book inspired me to um, show things that are very relevant and important to me. Now I don't have a brooch that symbolizes this brooch here, but it really resonated with me and in my travels, I'm going to probably be looking for a brooch very similar to this one. And this one is um, opposite is a brooch showing the glass ceiling in its ideal condition, shattered. And that to me is so relevant. And I've seen brooches like this, shattered brooches, that didn't have meaning to me. But after reading this book, I think when I see my next shattered brooch, glass brooch, I probably buy it. And next time I enter a board meeting or negotiations on my salary, um, I'm probably going to be wearing it. This is another brooch that she um, wore. And this is a peace brooch. And I pulled out this one to show you my version of a peace. And she wrote here, I wore this dove brooch again when paying my respects to the victims of genocide in Rwanda. Peace doves and necklace. So this is a peace stuff that she wore, and you can see it right here. And whenever she wore a brooch, she's telling you something. And in this case, it's let's have peace. So if I ever did a rally on peace or anything that involves peace, I might consider wearing this peace stuff. My father loved doves. It's one of his favorite birds. And so anything that has a dove on it reminds me of my dad. This was a relevant um, story when she wore this angel brooch and I pulled out two examples of angel brooches that I had in my collection and I happen to have more than this but these are the ones that looked more similar to this um, and um, she wrote here in 1998 terrorists bombed the U.S. Embassy in Kenya and Tanzania before flying across the Atlantic to honor those who were killed I made a brief remarks at Andrews Air Force Base. With sadness in my heart, I turned for help to an angel. So when I have sadness in my heart, 
and when I need some guidance, I might consider wearing one of these brooches. Um, because sometimes you do need an angel on your shoulders to help guide you through some really tough and difficult times, um, such as the uh, the bombings in Kenya. Um, so, you know, brooches are so meaningful. Um, they could really pull out um, the feeling that you have in your heart. So here's a brooch, it's a bee. And I pulled out this brooch to symbolize um, this one that she had in the book. And she writes, Yes, sir, or Arafat, and I conferring by phone with President Clinton. I spent many hours wrangling with the Palestinian leader about the need for, uh, sorry, I have a hard time seeing, compromise in the Middle East. My pen reflected my mood. So what sort of mood do you think she would have if when she wore this brooch? This is another brooch that I pulled this one in my, out of my collection to show you the zebras. Um, even though it's not as fanciful as this, this one's made of wood, um, the idea and the sentiment is the, is the same. Um, Nelson Mandela, A New Hope in Africa in the mid-1990s. I wore my favorite zebra pen when I met him at his estate in Pretoria, South Africa, in December 1997. Uh, and this brooch she has as a shoulder pin, uh, which was very, very popular back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but this is reminded her of Africa, and it does for me too. This is um, another diplomatic flag brooch that she pulled out. And um, I pulled this one out because kind of reminded me of this one has a chain and this has a little bit of a chain. Um, and she writes, in North Korea posing for the camera with Kim Jong-il, um, to appear taller, I wore heels. So did he. <laughs> American flag. So apparently he wears heels to appear taller and she wanted to represent the United States wearing this flag. Now, I showed you this earlier in the other book. Again, it's here. Very similar idea. The panther. But the other brooch that I wanted to point out was this um, this guy over here, which is her teddy bear um, brooch. So here's the teddy bear, look at him up close. He, he's got these articulated legs, they move and they sway. And that's why I bought this brooch because I liked um, that he moved. Um, but the teddy bear was actually named after Theodore Roosevelt um, when he shot a bear. Um, and after he shot the bear, um, someone gave him a teddy bear. I think this is the way the story goes. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then, um, from then on forward, these bears were called teddy bears. Um, so here's the, her teddy bear, and this is my version of it. This is um, a page full of her beautiful dragonfly brooches, and I happen to love and collect dragonflies. So... This dragonfly down here reminds me of this dragonfly, um, which I believe I showed you in one of my other brooch videos. Um, so, uh, and then this dragonfly up here sort of reminded me of this Czech, vintage Czech glass dragonfly. You can see what it looks like in the back. Look at the pretty colors on that. And so that's what that reminds me of. But what I love the most is this Heidi Douse, who is a HSN um, contributor, um, is this Heidi Douse brooch. And this brooch is called a tremblant um, because when you walk, it flutters. And this is, I have this exact brooch, but I couldn't find it. But I have several of these in my collection and I was able to find this one. So I substituted this one, but I do have this exact one in my collection. Um, and it's a book piece. Um, 
In fact, it was through HSN when I saw Heidi Dow sell these brooches that she mentioned that her brooch was in this book. And that's what made me get this book. And I'm so glad that I did. This is the way it's constructed in the back. And these are collectible. And she has several of these in several different colors. Um, so this is perhaps one of my favorite brooches of all time. And one of the favorites, of course, in this book. Let me see what she says here. Um, the dragonfly is an extraordinary species with large eyes, two sets of powerful wings, an athletic body, and a healthy appetite for mosquitoes and other pests. Known to the English as the devil's darning needle, the insect is associated by the Japanese with courage, happiness, and strength. Artists find dragonflies fascinating, so do I. Intron blonde dragonfly with pearl. That's the, actually my favorite. So, um, dragonfly is, uh, in Japanese culture, a um, symbol of courage, happiness, and strength. And I happen to think that I embody all of those um, symbols. And perhaps maybe that's why I love dragonflies so much. Um I wish I, if I had the time, I can go through more of my collection because I do have representative of this brooch and this brooch. And I do have a gorgeous frog brooch like this that's um, made from Ivanka Trunk, Trump. And I wish that I had found it because, um, you know, with Trump being the president right now and I don't get into politics at all and I don't want to, um, it would have been very apropos for this book. Um, there was, um, let's see, I think I'm missing some pages here. I'll go back to it. Let me just get to this one here. Now, this brooch here, um, I pulled out, um, this brooch to symbolize that brooch up there. And these are lilies of the valley. And lilies of the valley has a very distinct, strong scent, um, that a lot of people seem to like. I also pulled out this brooch to represent this one. And this is a wish, you know, you, you it's a dandelion and you blow on it and all the little um, feathery uh, leaves blow off of it. But I don't know if this would be considered a wish, but it sort of reminded me of that. And so that's why I pulled that one. Now there's other ones in this book that I'm, uh, here we go, this one. Um, this brooch here reminded me of this one right here. This is a Joseph of Hollywood who's a very, very, very highly collectible um, costume jewelry maker who uh, made jewelry for Hollywood. Um, and he was very innovative and I'll probably do uh, a segment on him. I have a couple of Josephs of Hollywood. They're really hard to come by and very expensive. But when I saw this brooch, it sort of reminded me of the Joseph of Hollywood. And it turned out that she has a collection in, in you know, she has it in her collection. Um, and this is a very well-known Joseph of Hollywood piece. And, um, but this is not, this is not even marked, but I did buy it because it reminded me of that. And so that's the inspiration there. Um, but she writes, I like to arrange my bees and flowers in different ways. One evening while sitting with Aga Khan at a State Department dinner on cultural diplomacy, I had the bees in an ascending line. You know, so <laughs> um, this one, um, bees to me are just phenomenal creatures. Um, I love them greatly. And I think I'm missing one other uh, picture. Um, and if I can't find it, I'm going to show you the brooches anyway, because I love them and they're cool. Let's see if I can find it without taking up too much more of your time. Um, it's in this book and that are, that is these two brooches here. These are bees. Um, part of my critter collection. Um, this one is really stunning. And imagine, if you will, with a collection of critters. I wonder if you can even add that one to it. Take that one out and add that. Isn't that beautiful? That would make a nice, stunning um, collection on your lapel. So, um, 
this is my first time trying one of my books and um, I hope that you like it. Please let me know what you think about it. And um, I have a lot of books and I do have plenty of pins that I collect from the books. Um, I study them in the book and then when I find them, I purchase them. So um, if this is something that, that interests you, you know, please let me know. If you like what you saw, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, give me a comment, um, help me grow my channel. Um, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. So with that, adios.